Welcome. This is the October 25th Open ZFS Production Users Call. We have Jesse, Greg, Jan, Stu, and myself, Michael. We were lamenting some issues that Greg was having with a Dell R7525, and there are some links in the document. And uh, Jan, it sounds like you had some on-topic points. Go ahead with those. Yeah, so um, I'm looking into how to put to uh, improve FreeBSD jail provisioning on top of ZFS in FreeBSD 14 using the new uh, extended jail syntax and so on. Uh, but you could encounter the same use case on other operating systems. The reason I'm looking into this is that normally if you have, uh, let's say a Linux container-like workflow, you would take your, con your images as tarballs, for example, and then basically untar them on top of each other. And if you do the obvious thing in ZFS, but also the obviously incorrect thing, you would basically do the same with ZFS uh, snapshot and clones, which feels great until you find out that you can't rebase clones. So once, let's say you install a FreeBSD 13.2, uh, jail and then you want to upgrade that jail to 14. Uh, yeah, every instance of this has its own 14 copy and all the deduplication savings are gone, but all of the downsides are now uh, staring you in the face. And so you can't have writable clones um, if you ever intend to rebase them. So I uh, either have to give up cloning or I have to give up writable clones, not clones at all. I looked into using read-only clones and that this works great. So what I do is I provision my FreeBSD whatever, patch level whatever, uh, as a ZFS data set, snapshot it, and then clone it into a jail as the base jail. And the FreeBSD file system hierarchy works out in such a way that it works really well in, in practice. And I don't need overlays and unions within directories. Instead, I just can express what I need with mount points. That brought me to the next uh, stumbling stone in my path, which was that now I have this read-only ZFS data set, which is a clone of my FreeBSD user land, but I have file systems as child data sets under that, which I don't want to lose when I update the base, mm -hmm. which is a problem because if I do a recursive ZFS destroy on the clone, it will also destroy the child data sets of the clone, which are the persistent data I want to preserve for the jail. So um, that doesn't work because what I had to do within this design to make it work is to ZFS rename the clone array and basically for each subtree find out if I want to move it back in place or if I want to clone it again. So basically replace all the clones and then rename just the child data sets back into the original path, which is possible, but annoying and too much moving uh, pieces for me to feel comfortable with. Then yeah. just uh, this weekend, I found a, a lot cleaner solution, which is for the jail, I create an unmountable data set for each type of child, uh, or let's say descendant data set I want to have under there. So the base, the packages and the persistent data, I create an other level of unmountable data set under the jail data set, which is, but for those, I set the mount point property to the jail root directory, which gives me the option of then receiving data sets or creating data sets and have them uh, derive the right mount points automatically, except for the base where I also set the mount point 
explicitly. So that finally works as I wanted to. Yeah, and are now, those not masking one another out? So you overmount it and you lose uh, the, all, so the, the, the dummy quotes? ones in the middle. Yeah. So the J one has can mount equals uh, off, and the the container ones underneath that for the base, the packages, and the um, data um, are also with can mount equals off, which okay. doesn't get inherited. Then I can assign them a mount point. And this mount point uh, is only so that they inherit the right mount point to the actually mountable children. Do you have ZFS list output that you could share to communicate this? Yes. Uh, drop it in chat or in the document as you wish. And okay. let's just see what you're talking about. Uh, and I know not everyone here is a jail user, but it's been a hot topic lately. And it, there was a call a little it's bit It's not ago. just uh, for uh, relevant to jails. Sure, sure. Uh, it's also for an, a potential usage for just any kind of Linux container technology could use the same approach if they can accept the same constraint. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're, pre so what this gives me is that I can, normally let's say you have a free BSD userland update for whatever reason, bug mm -hmm. fixes, security fixes, uh, there's a new patch level. Mm -hmm. If you had this layering of base operating system, packages, local customization and so on, every time um, lower layer, layer changes, all layers on top of them have to be recreated. Mm -hmm. So every time your default FreeBSD or Linux user land yeah. has to be updated, all the packages have to be untarred again on a new instance and then mounted and so on. So you do all of this and it's a lot of data movement, which takes time. Okay, yeah. Do you have uh, a, by, something we can look at visually? Let's, yeah, let me just yeah, drop that in just so to so this be a is lot what clearer. it looks here, for example. Yeah, these are my uh data sets for the uh base systems I'm testing with. Then, here, this is what I create uh for my reference simple application. Oh, that's too long already. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Stupid limitations. Oh, yeah. Life. Uh, uh, so this here is what it looks like. And the stuff under data is uh, local to the jail. The stuff under PKGs, just short for packages, uh, to keep the amount uh, path not so long. Um, this here then gets mushed together. And I snapshot it all. If I try to copy and paste the snapshots, it gets far too long. But uh, I think of it like I do a snapshot on create so that I can roll back to the empty state if it fails during provisioning. Yeah. Uh, and then so that the I can clean up and have an indempotent jail.conf, uh, which basically wipes Anything if it's out of sync, cleans up and recreates it. And then the jail instantiating this would be something like this. Yep, okay. So give us a quick tour here. Let's the say... last one. Yeah. Is, uh, as you can see, uh, the um, so. Only the uh, base FreeBSD 14.0 uh, 14 is mounted. Uh, the base, the data, and PKGs and PKG USR isn't mounted, but then maybe I should filter the mount output instead. May, yeah, that maybe. Make... That could be helpful. Yeah, because that's a lot more, uh, it's a lot easier to understand. Okay. Because here you don't see what is mounted <laughs> and what is not mounted. So this is the uh, um, check to look. Is 
uh, this is what's mounted on in my instance, which okay. combines a base system and uh, the packages and a few temp FSs. Oh my gosh. Okay, cool. The temp FSs are just there so that I have a var run, var temp, and slash temp, and so on. The temp FSs, uh, yeah, are mostly just so that I have a feral writable storage, a few megabytes only, so that I can have some place to put PID files, which do doesn't have to be cleaned up on each start. Okay. Because it's always so empty on start. Jail root is jld one here. Yeah, that's a DL, exactly. That's a DL, yes, so. okay. Yeah, um, that's a downloader uh, for the downloading, whatever um, you want. Oh, and the tempfs is all disposable, I take it? Yeah, the tempfs are all disposable. Okay. Some of them are pre-filled with mount MFS, like slash etc and stuff. So there's no empty slash etc, but it's just copied from the current base every time on boot. Oh, so I see. The jail basically oh. every time on boot I run, I create a user, I put in some sysrc invocations, and then the, I make it read only. So that at runtime the jail uh, slash etc. This way I don't have to worry about upgrading slash etc between releases. Okay. Because I always start out with a copy of my base systems slash etc. Uh, I apply the patches from the jail configuration. And then mm -hmm. I make it read only. Okay, so, so the, the, uh, just to be super clear here, and having heard this, heard about this for a few weeks, it sounds like you never mentioned tempfs, yeah. and you're copying in key items at so, um, boot time, which allows you to have sort of a disposable. Yeah, uh, the, I use just fs tab for this. Okay. Uh, so a per jail one. Okay. Um, because uh, I'll suddenly use feature but very useful for this kind of thing is that uh let me grab this uh it, my fs tab looks something like this yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. uh just need a second yeah so this here uh, is my uh jail fs tab uh, it looks terrible in the formatting but it looks nice in my editor with the columns properly aligned well, I have technologies for that. Um, yeah. Um, so what I do is, I um, yeah. This way we can have then. Uh, yeah. Now it looks less mostly readable. Yeah. Tiny. Uh, the but... important part is the MFS lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you can see, uh, the file the file system type is still tempfs. But here it's MFS, which gets X mounted through the mount MFS command, which is hmm. an old command from the old memory file system. Yeah. Which created a memory disk, put in UFS, and mounted it, as, uh, it async. I'm not doing that. I'm still creating a modern tempfs, but I'm using it instead of the kernel mount system call because it can use packs to copy initial content into the tempfs. Oh, interesting. Dash K okay. is the, the dash K mount option. It gets passed as dash K to mount tempfs, which, which tells it where to copy the skeleton from. Okay. So that I can have an initial copy of the base system uh, slash etc snapshot for the tag I want to base my jail upon for this start of the jail. Interesting. And right now, if the CFS cache is warm uh, I, and I destroy the jail and create it again, it's less than 500 milliseconds. Interesting. OK. To provision the uh, jail uh, with just a blow to jail.conf and a bit of sh uh, shell script. Uh, um, it buried the lead on tempfs and mfs, which uh, perhaps other attendees are familiar with. It's a bit previously so, specific, but um, I'm sure there are equivalents else. Linux has equivalents. Uh, uh -huh. I don't know about Solaris. And yeah, you could uh, have the base system basically have a slash etc. Um, Snapshot, and then I could just clone this snapshot on each boot, and recreate or roll it back. 
so that I still make sure that I don't make nobody assumes there's persistent state in there. But slash etc is like two point something megabytes. Yeah, it is um, tiny. Is exactly. the FS tab handling the copy in, or is there a separate script or something that's handling? No, no that's the uh, the so the mount command handles the FF FS tab. Yeah. The uh, mount command then calls for the file systems which aren't directly supported by the kernel. It yeah. calls a mount command, mount MFS. And mount MFS gets past the arguments, including the read write and the size and the dash K. Oh, uh, where and are those arguments? Dash I'm not K, seeing them. You mark the line as red. You have seen uh, it. Just didn't read oh, it. Oh, the dash K, the K, K is tiny. Yeah. Sorry. Yep, missed it. Yep. There it is. Yeah, okay. Here uh, is the uh, flag to tell mount MFS to, Got as it. the FS top line says, mount a temp FS instead of an MFS. Yep. But uh, to uh, pre fill it anyway from an uh, existing directory. Hmm. So uh, what it does is it basically enters the source directory and then does a pax rw uh, dot. And then the mount point. Goodness. Okay, that's uh, oh, I didn't within see that the, coming. Uh, the mount MFS command. Yeah. Which is the easiest way to have a completely feral temp FS with this of just a few limited in size to a few megabytes, which is enough to contain configuration files and log files and yep. bit files and stuff like this. Goodness. Which is what I use it for. Hmm. And yeah, that then gets a uh, handle basically everything except uh, ZFS with uh, tempfs. Uh, sorry, with the F FS tab, yep. including the device uh, and file descriptor file systems, so slash dev and slash dev fd. And I trust the OS creates all the dynamic files in like var run. And you don't have to like Boot the system uh, once and copy them over and do something crazy. Wait, okay. uh, no, no, wait. Uh, run contains by default, for example, the linker cache. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the LD, uh, whatever, yep. LD config and LD config 32 and stuff like this. Uh, okay. And those I copy over, as you can see, uh, in the run line from the uh, whatever was the state of the. Um, the uh, um, packages jail after it had done its job. I see. Okay. And so, hmm. yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I copy the run from the packages jail so that, for example, if something adds a new library directory, let's say I install Perl and I have Perl modules which are shared libraries in a directory which isn't in the normal uh, or Python or whatever, uh, the dependency. And now I have to have new linker hints yeah. for these directories. I copy those over, but I copy the slash etc from uh, the base jail because installing packages isn't supposed to uh, change the slash etc directory. Yeah. Okay. So in on reboot, you you lose the tempfs items, but you don't care. I trust exactly. I don't care because. Uh, the jails uh, um, hooks will do the customization on each start, and the customization is just things like write a few, append a few lines to the etcrc.conf or something. Okay. And that I do per start. And okay, so way, yeah, tempfs is truly tempfs. Okay. Yeah, but, really. It, and you get persistence here, here, and here. Oh my god! No, no, you... none of this uh, temp fs are copied back. Right, but yeah, Etsy's lost persistent. Okay. No, no, no. The MFS none ones are the... none of it. No, oh, it is temp fs here in the start. Okay. Yeah, exactly. They are all temp fs. Um, yeah. I remount uh, them or I update the mount to read only after the jail has been created. <laughs> yeah. Before the first command is executed inside the I jail, see. so that. Uh, or when the setup is done, so before the real job happens, I use the exec dot uh, created to set this up, 
And then I can use exit.start to run commands like etc rc in there. Okay. Uh, and then if you the, add the a user on a system, script. you lose it on stop? Yes, but it will be recreated on next start. Wow. Well, what step preserves that? I'm missing that. It isn't preserved. It's done on each start. Uh... I run pw uh, in the exec.created. Uh, pre uh, exec Oh, every, oh, okay, fine. So it's so basically I automate, I provision it on every start of the jail, which is a few milliseconds. So you couldn't run PW on a running jail and have it preserved for, with the user preserved. Not using temp FS. Yeah. If I use the right. CFS dataset for that, yeah, of course. Okay, sure, good. but then I have to worry about what happens when fourteen dot one comes yeah, out. Exactly. Well, okay. Now I don't have to worry because I only apply the very same changes with sysrc to 14.1. Yep. And it still works. I okay, okay. What I now basically care about is the script uh, to automate the modifications on create. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if anyone, uh, but Michael is still trying to uh, follow <laughs> my. Uh, um, no, I'm so following. Everyone, I, I confess, the, he's uh, been describing this for some tool. time, and this reveals actually quite a bit that wasn't clear. So, anyway, go ahead, others. Questions, recommendations, uh, anything. The the way I've done it before instead of having all of the different temp FSs, I have a single temp FS and symlink back in. Yeah, that works. Uh, and you can either have a single uh, one and um, symlinks, or what also works is if you is, uh, have a single potentially persistent directory and then Export parts of it via nullfs and or in Linux terminology bind mounts. Yep. Uh, it also works. The downside is that while it's not much, uh, nullfs has an overhead and hides some things which could be useful from you. True. The the and... biggest thing for me is when I <clears throat> generally when I've done jail type, what the situation you described, it's twenty or thirty. So eight mount yeah. points for 20 or 30 things gets obnoxious to step through. So that's... Yeah, don't a... do that. Grab through it. <laughs> no, I bet again, it's one of those sanity things of, hey, it's easier if I've got one yeah. mount point. But again, there's it's it's Linux, it's Unix, everything. There's multiple ways to do everything. Yeah, yep. It's course. what works best for you at the time. Yep. Uh, the other thing uh, uh, I did right a second here is so for example I use this to then make a WireGuard tunnel available uh, with the host uh, jail or the parent the host system as underlays and the jail as overlay so uh, if you for example have to bypass censorship or enter someone's censored network uh, of some other country or something. Uh, then you uh, can uh, make it impossible for the jail processes to even know the host address to leak it. Because uh, the well, in this case, WireGuard tunnel uses the host as underlay and the jail VNet, so the virtual network instance uh, in Linux terminology that would be a network namespace. Um, and the underlay of the WireGuard is the real network and the overlay is the WireGuard tunnel. So the jail only sees a WireGuard interface and a loopback and has no idea how the WireGuard is able to reach any endpoints. Okay. Can't see hmm. that. Do you think you'll share any scripts to do this or is that all Ansible? Or uh, right now it's a shell script which uh, needs some uh, polish. Well, keep polishing. Um, all, all shell scripts need polishing, even when they're done. Yeah, correct. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, and the and the author needs a shower, but uh, that's not. No, no. Right now, it's really a bit too uh, specific. 
And I'm thinking about if we're using the RC order command used also by the FreeBSD RC.d yeah. uh, scripts to uh, sort the different components I want to combine per hook and then make it possible so that you basically symlink them in, use the keyboard uh, key uh, red flags to basically mark at which pages in the jail, start or stop, this hook wants to run and make it possible to use something that looks uh, disturbingly like the previous DRC.D mechanism, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but it works for this. I've, I will have to check how much uh, overhead it brings because I would really like to keep provisioning time under a second. Yeah. That's what uh, I've been messing around with over the weekend. Is a demo appropriate at some time in the future? <sighs> can run it and show it. Uh, okay. But uh, there's not much to see except... If it's all in uh, a second. <laughs> no, no. Uh, okay. It produces a bunch of logging output, but let's keep that maybe the live demo of the <laughs> to recording because it's all in flux. Okay. Excuse me. Well, I do look forward to your updates. Um, earlier, Jesse had a question if there have been any open ZFS 2.2 issues. And um, I simply have a quotation from Slack, which is, has anyone had a chance to look at the Mac OS PR? So we'd have to look at what they're referring to. That's not very specific. Um, thank you, Jan. Has anyone had the time to play with a B clone? Uh, the new yeah. block cloning, eh? Yeah, file level block cloning uh, with less overhead than uh, the traditional DDAP. So, yeah, from a previous call, it sounds like there are some very interesting possibilities, many of which I'm sure half of which are not even yet imagined. So, uh, mm. I certainly hope it is bug free in this release. And I look forward to everyone's clever uses of it. A uh, note that you may have to enable it manually on your OS. On FreeBSD, it's feature gated behind uh, SysCTL, and you have to upgrade the uh, pools uh, on this format. Feature flags. Yeah. 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 Speaking of which, ooh, thank you, Jan. If anyone is like, on a call and bored out of their mind. I've been burned by feature flags repeatedly in so far as now with all these different OSs and generations, they're becoming mighty, oh, dare I say, incompatible. But there is this great chart that someone built, and I believe it is rather out of date. Although, wait, 2.2, hold on, master. Um, this may not be so bad. 13 plus. Oh, it's 2.2 is documented. Yeah, I, that is great. I don't know when that landed, but somehow in my quick read of it, that is great news. Well, so oh, yeah. I'd love to share this with you. Just, it's fascinating. And I recall there being a, a flag or something to just specify a generation. Does that ring a bell, or do you have to manually? Yeah, there was discussion about adding this uh, ZFS uh, pool creation time. Yes. To basically, say I want to target these or the accepted list of platforms as of this time, basically epoch or whatever you want to yep. call it. Like, yeah, I would like to uh, be compatible with FreeBSD, Linux, and. On the did OS that, as of 2020 or something. Yeah. Did that leave the idea phase? No, no. The idea phase is basically find the intersection of yeah. releases you want to support. And okay. Them. Uh, but here and now much... you have to make a massive Z pool create command that either excludes or yeah, exactly. has a flag for uh, all of them, which gets a little cumbersome. kind of what you have to do the... Uh, to do it, uh, yeah. Okay. It could be a shell scared wrapper around the ZF, uh, Z pool create command, or it should go into the Z pool command so that you can have basically what something which would feel to the user more like a ZFS version level instead of a 
collection of feature flags. Yes, exactly. Now, has anyone else found workarounds or clever ways to preserve their sanity? I don't know if this was ever committed because I don't have much use for yeah. cross-platform compatibility with non-open and, ZFS. And others on the call? So anyway, I am glad sorry, that... Sorry about bounce, bouncing no between mutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and calls. That's okay. Yeah. That's cool. Um. Anyway, if we're missing some clever strategy, I'm all ears because there's always something. And I'm surprised that there are flags that have, oh, either no, interesting, either come and gone or what's going on here. Anyway. So that's all green yeses across the board. And then this one, what it was removed, class of storage. Oh, reload only compatible. Who's got it? Uh, Looks like an Accenta, Accenta feature. Got it. Okay. I didn't even catch that. They're uh, doing there is a proprietary. -ish. I think huh. this was a prototype of what you uh, know is uh, special allocation classes, right? That could easily be. Okay. It's clever. probably a prototype yeah. uh, kind of thing. Nice. Okay. Fascinating. 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 There's a yes, yes. Also, yep. Makes sense. I see. I see. They've they've done their thing. Cool. Anyway, just wanted to share that. Uh, that's that's a lot of homework on somebody's part. Boring uh, homework. It's like forcing. A certain yellow sum we want to write hundred times the compatible versions onto the yes. whiteboard. Uh, so I'll put it as a question here. Uh, did some form of I want this generation slash early slash year of featured lags land. Because I recall lots of talk about it, but do not know if there's like something out there. So I'm I'm all ears. Maybe someone will chime in in the future. Any other questions, ideas? Uh, Zpool dot features. Let's see. Uh, I think it is that simply documentation of them, or let me jump on this. It's right uh, the documentation of them, uh, but uh, yeah. Is that a manual page or commands? Yeah, I think it's, it's a, a manual page. Yeah. Yeah. Pool, uh, yeah, no, I don't want to parse that page. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yeah, there are a bunch of tickets for that, but I don't know if there's a, if it's ever made it in. I think. The discussion started at least 2018 or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, CFS. There is a notion of set version equals, in this case, current, but maybe there yeah, are. But post uh, some ZFS uh -oh. feature level. 5, yeah, five thousand. Right. So that's what 5, they mean by feature and, uh, level. Yeah. Which that's... means that basically uh, Oracle gets to use four thousand and a bit below yeah, that. So exactly. I think they're still thirty something or so. Yeah. So it's a long time until then. Not going to collide. Yeah. So that's what they mean by version. That was old news yeah. in Open ZFS land. Yeah, and then everything else now is a feature flag instead of a correct strongly then... monotonic. They've done that beautifully. Version. Any other questions or concerns? And I do hope you work out that Dell issue because that sounds suspicious. I, I've seen it work too well in production that you should be having shouldn't be having that much trouble from an HBA. Uh, yeah, it could be that you just have to toggle a bit, or that it's hmm. only with the the cards they have the deepest level of integration with. Even down the vendor and product ID yeah. of a card they know is supposed to have their custom firmware because they reuse the original product uh, 
and uh, manufacturer ID for the because that's burned into the ASIC. Uh, I assume at this point, and so yeah. they have no yeah, good they're... way of knowing if their feature is implemented because they hacked it in afterward. I see. Go ahead. The, the other thing, Greg, I've done in the past, and it's a hack, really admit it, but down rev the ID rack. Right. And that takes the BIOS down a couple levels, and then the newer cards. And we have great luck with the 9500 Broadcoms doing that in non Dell servers. But, <clears throat> you know, that's try and get it as trying to get. Dell's overhead um, slash footprint as far away from it as possible. So wait, that's <laughs> downgrading the firmware or what are you downgrading? Exactly. You downgrade the ID rack, which downgrades the BIOS. But the, the problem with that approach is that you also reintroduce all the bugs they fixed. Yeah. Yeah, but most, so most of the- feature and bug compatible to exploits from a decade ago. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> But mo most of the ID rack things are feature enhancements and annoyances. I yeah. agree. I don't want to do it. I've say I've done it in the past. It's a hack. It yes. may work. It may not. Oh, I drag. You're saying? Yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah, I drag, yeah. I've the other it. thing you no, could not try is cool. to uh, <laughs> look what you can disable in the I drag uh, or uh, in enter the bias and look if you can disable the option ROM hmm. for it uh, because if it doesn't run the option ROM maybe the card isn't completely initialized and the iDrag won't pick it up hmm. yeah I, I think we tried that but, but thank you um, we're sort of past the point now yeah, of, no. yeah, of course, just, uh, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I wish I did have the time I, I tried to put it off it was kind of funny because I, I posted um after we we submit it and we said okay let's just buy the Dell card, I put the Dell card in. I thought my problems were all over, but um, the hmm. machine still wouldn't boot. It got a lot further, and that's when I post it oh. on the the free BSD form there. And that's so why that it was... sounds like something else. And I will say, I thought you can disable the lifecycle controller entirely, which might get it out of the way hypothetically. Yeah, um, I, I did not try that. Uh, but next time we have another Dell server in route to us right now. So maybe cool. I'll take the opportunity to try it on that one. Okay, but, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Any last thoughts? And feel free to just mail the, the CC'd people on the invitation, um, unless you pulled it off the calendar event. But uh, we're, we're all out here with, with our unique experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, uh, I, I didn't know there was uh, this kind of thing going on, so it's kind of nice. Um, and thanks for having me over. How did you find out about it, and are you on the CC list? Um, I've uh, been starting to linger in the uh, Open ZFS channel. Oh, good. Um, so I um, popped in there one day to uh, ask a question about uh, special device small block handling. Mm -hmm. And um, i just been there since. Well, welcome. And yeah, thank you. Uh, drop uh, drop me an email address if you want to indeed receive the um, mailings. I just do a simple CC list, nothing fancy. Yep, I'll do that. Thanks, Michael. Hey, my pleasure. Well, everyone, perhaps I'll see you next week. Right. Take care, everyone. Have Bye. a good week. Thanks, guys.